In this video we're going to take a look at the auto wired annotation in Spring and we're going to talk a little bit about object instantiation. So if you haven't heard me say it before, and I'm sure you probably have by now, this is highly integrated with the concept of polymorphism. Variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call, and object type tells you what happens when you call those methods. That indicates that variable type and object type can be two different types, and indeed they can. And this gives us quite a bit of power and flexibility when we're programming. So take a look at the line down here. You see that I have a sample line here where we have an interface. Uh, I just know that because I start it with an I, but let's just call that an interface. And again, not a user interface, but the Java construction interface, a variable. And then I'm calling a new constructor. That's how we traditionally know object instantiation in Java. But in Spring with AutoWire, all we need to do is declare the variable. In Spring, we'll figure out the object to put inside of that variable. If we take a look at the class diagram I put together earlier, we know we have things broken up into a DTO package, and then we also have a UI service and DAO package. And you'll notice that we typically have a concrete class going to an interface, and then the interface will, will be implemented by one of two classes. One could be a stub, the other could be a DAO. In this very first video, I'm going to experiment around a little bit I'm going to draw a line from this controller directly into a stub class, which means I need to make that stub class. After I've made that stub class and I confirm that it works, I'm going to change this wiring and I'm going to go to the interface and I'm going to confirm that we do get an instantiation of this stub class. Of course, I can't do the DAO because we haven't done anything downstream yet. And eventually, I will more than likely terminate that connection between the controller and the interface and we'll have the series of classes that represent each of the pages that our user can interact with. But more on that to come later. At this point, we just want to see what AutoWired looks like. Quick check of our scrum board so I can keep this up to date. Uh, we said we're going to make the interface of the stub. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that to me, like so, and save. And I'm going to put that in progress. Now, ideally, we should only have one thing in progress at a time, but creating the interface is going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, creating the stub will be fairly straightforward as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put these both just in one interface. And again, I'll assign this one. Uh, sorry, I'm going to put these both, whoops, put these both in, in progress and assign them both to me. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at our virtual machine. Now, interfaces might seem like a bit of extra work, but it's, it's really not. As a matter of fact, there are two ways to implement an interface. One is to write the interface first and then write a class that implements that interface. That's what most people do, and it does feel like double work because you're writing the interface and then you're writing the class. The other thing to do is just kind of think out loud by drawing out the stub class and then extract an interface from it. So that's the approach I'm going to take here. And I'll tell you what, let's go up to source main Java. I want to put, because this is service layer, I'm going to make a new package here and we will call it com dot plant places and then we'll call this one dot service this is where all of our business logic classes will go or in other words all of our service classes now underneath here i'm going to right click and say new and just right off of our class diagram i'm going to call it specimen service stub now we have to think about what this specimen service is going to do i don't need a super class don't need an interface just yet the specimen service is going to allow us to save specimen DTOs to some kind of persistence mechanism. Maybe a traditional database, maybe a cloud database, maybe a NoSQL database. We don't know yet. Now I did say a specimen DTO and you know what? We haven't made a specimen DTO yet. Let's do that as well. So right click new and I'm going to, I'll tell you what, I'll do it a different way this time. We'll do a new class and for the package I'm going to say com.plantplaces.dto. Last time, you remember, I right-clicked and I made the package up front. Here, I can do it all in one screen. Either way, going to be the same result. Feel free to use what you're most comfortable with. And we'll call this one specimen DTO, just like so, and hit finish. Now, all I need to do is declare the DTO. I can add more attributes later, but we know we're going to need a couple things. I'll go ahead and fill those out. Private int specimen ID, private string latitude, private string longitude and then a simple right click 
All right, so Toad, let's highlight it. Right click, uh, refactor, and mm, don't see what I want to have there. So let's go to source and let's do generate getters and setters. That'll work for us. Select all and put them after longitude and generate. And here's our DTO. Now, uh, that's a Java DTO. My Kotlin friends are probably screaming right now and saying in Kotlin, I could do that all in one line. Wonderful. Uh, okay, the reason why we have a DTO is you notice it encapsulates all these internal details. So our interface, or in this case, our stub, because we haven't made an interface yet, does not need to know about all of the internal details of the specimen DTO. And what I mean by that is we can use specimen DTO as a parameter for an uh, a parameter for a method or a return type for a method. So I could say, uh, let's say I have public specimen DTO, and then we'll uh, say re read something like that, or we could say fetch by ID, and we could say int ID, something like that will be fine. And right now, all we're going to do is construct and return an empty specimen DTO. So I'll say specimen DTO, specimen DTO equals new specimen DTO. Now here again, you might say, wait, I thought we were using Spring. Why are you calling a constructor? Well, remember what I said. This is just a, a mock-up. This is a stub. We're allowed to hard code in a stub because it, it's just kind of a proof of concept. That's about all. Now notice it doesn't know where to find specimen DTO because it's in a different package. In Eclipse, Control shift o will organize imports automatically. I'm using a virtual machine via a browser. The browser interrupts my keyboard shortcuts, or it intercepts them, uh, rather. So I have to do it the long way. <laughs> Going to be the same result either way. Uh, this will work for us. And what am I missing up here? Uh, add return statement. OK, well, that's easy. So we just say return specimen DTO. OK, we could probably do something like specimen DTO dot uh, set specimen ID. We'll give it, a, I don't care, number 43 if we want, just something that we can uh, confirm that this is actually constructing properly. Now we should support the CRUD operations. Uh, so this is a fetch. We probably want a save or a create or something like that. So I can say public void save and then we'll say specimen DTO. And right now we're not going to do anything and it's a void type and oops, sorry, specimen DTO, specimen DTO. So uh, right now we're, we're not going to bother filling in the details. We just kind of want to blank a couple things out here. And if I go back to specimen DTO, you notice how that is a method parameter here, a method return type here. Works out great. The cool thing about that is I can go inside and change this and say private string uh, notes or description. Let's go with description. And I can generate a getter and setter for this. I do not need to change those method signatures because they're dealing with this DTO at a high level. And that's exactly the purpose of a DTO is that it's essentially independent of any of the layers that we've defined. The UI, the service layers, it's essentially independent of those. So uh, let me just uh, finish this guy up here and generate. And there we go. Okay, so now let's go back to our controller and notice I've not yet popped out an interface. We will do that momentarily. I just want to go to the controller and confirm that what we're doing right now is going to work for us. So in the controller, I'm going to make an attribute level variable. We'll say private specimen service stub specimen service stub. A couple things it's going to want. It's going to want me to import the specimen service stub. Now look carefully and think about what line one, what line 15 is doing. It is simply declaring a variable. Remember the difference between declaring a variable, initializing a variable, and also assigning a variable. Declaring a variable means you're just paving a parking space. Assigning a value to a variable means you're putting a car in that space. And the very first assignment is one called the, is one that's called initialization. We're only declaring a variable here. We're not creating an object. We need Spring to do that for us. And to do that, we need to understand some of the annotations. So these are the annotations that we're going to use. At auto wired, if we put this above an attribute like the one I have, it's going to try to find a type that matches and create an object of that, take the object, put it into that variable. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's going to look at the variable type and it's going to say, okay, is this a class? If so, I'll go find that class, create an object, stuff it in here. Is it an interface? Okay, then I might use some, I might use uh, classes that implement that interface and I might narrow it down based on naming conventions as well. I'll do my best to find the, the best match. Now, that does feel a bit vague because you could have many objects that implement an interface. So optionally, you can add something called a qualifier to it that says, this is the specific object that I want to push into this variable. Now, the object that you're creating, it has to be annotated with at component, which simply means I am qualified for being auto wired into a variable. So in other words, create an object out of me, put it into a variable. So if I if we consider the uh, the case I gave earlier, in this case we would put at component above specimen service stub, declare a variable of that in our controller, and put auto wired above that variable declaration, which indeed is what we're about to do. Uh, there is a little bit more to the story. In the old days of Spring, you had to manually match up object and variable type or object and variable in an XML file, and many times it was kind of obvious what would be matched. If you had a interface iDog and one implementing class called dog, guess what? Those things are going to match. So Spring came out with something called component scan, which meant, okay, look through these packages and just try to make this, uh, try to make a marriage between auto wired and component. So look for auto wired, look for matching at component, see where you can make a marriage. Now the component scan annotation is one of several annotations that you get by default when you use the Spring Boot annotation. So Spring Boot kind of gives you a bunch of annotations all together. It looks like I, I didn't give the full name of that, but at Spring Boot application, that's the annotation that we're looking for. As a matter of fact, notice when I mouse over it, this is pretty cool. It tells us what annotations it's pulling in, one of them is component scan. So let's go ahead and add the other annotations that we need. I go to specimen service stub, I say add component, and it, uh, component, need to spell that properly. And then I'm going to need to import this just as if I were importing a class. And okay, looking good there, save. Now let's go back to our controller and let's add an at auto wired annotation. Okay, and save. Now we want to test things out and whoops, and we know we'll need to import this guy as well. We want to test things out and we know that we just kind of have a dummy mock-up right now of our uh, specimen service stub, but we know the one thing we can debug through is fetch by ID and I've set a breakpoint there. Fetch indicates a read operation. Let's go to our controller and we know the get HTTP method typically means a read operation. So let's go down to this, this one called read will be fine. We can use this and let's say specimen service stub dot fetch by ID. And we'll just give it an ID of, uh, I don't care, an ID of 43. And that will be, that will save itself into a specimen DTO. So uh, usually I can control one in Eclipse, but we know that uh, Control one kind of says, okay, help me out here, Eclipse. Tell me what I want to do. Uh, so I can control one and I can say assign statement to new local variable. So that gives us the specimen DTO that will be returned by our stub implementation. Okay, so I save, snap a breakpoint. Once again, notice in this class, I do not have any new, I don't have any constructor calls. We're purely leaning on spring. So I'm going to go to my application, right click, say debug as Java application. Give it just a few moments and it starts up. Now let's go back. Remember I have the debugger going and as I recall, I have the debugger going on get method for the start endpoint. Yes, I do. I just confirm I have a breakpoint there. Yep, I have a breakpoint there. So let me run out to a browser and simply refresh. We see Eclipse lights up orange, which is a good sign. We go ahead and switch perspective. And now take a look. We are on our, our breakpoint. So if all works well, the specimen service stub should not be null. And if you take a look, it's a little tricky to see here, but if you see this little indication down at the bottom, it indicates there is indeed a variable, I'm sorry, an object inside of that variable, which means if I debug into this, we should be able to step right through it. So I'm going to step into, which is F5 in Eclipse. And sure enough, does this logic look a little bit familiar? I hope it does. Uh, I'll go ahead and choose F6, 
F6, and you see it's returning the specimen DTO. We can now take a look if I mouse over the specimen DTO that was returned. Sure enough, we see there's the specimen ID 43, and that specimen ID 43 is the one that we hard coded in our stub. So sure enough, the component scan, the auto wired, all working well together. We see that Spring was smart enough to find the right object to create and put that object into this variable. So I'm going to go ahead and stop what we're working on. Uh, if you're happy with this, great. Let me go and kind of do a bonus section though, which is interfaces, which I promised to talk about. I mentioned that interfaces are really easy to generate. As a matter of fact, sometimes I think it's easiest to kind of Put your thoughts into code in a stub class like this and then generate the interface after you've had a chance to kind of stub out what you think is going to happen. Easy to do. We simply right click, refactor, and then we choose extract interface. We give the interface a name. I believe on our class diagram we're calling this iSpecimen service. And then we select which methods we wish to push up to the interface. Those methods will remain in this implementing class but the signatures will be copied up to the interface. One thing that I'll often do at this point is I'll make sure that I have exceptions correct in the method signature. I'm itching a little bit now because I have a feeling that our save and our fetch are gonna need an exception. We can come back and handle that later. In any case, I go ahead and I choose okay and watch over here this com.plantplaces.service. Take a look over here as I choose okay. And you notice that now we have iSpecimen service. Also, take a look at specimen service stub, and you notice that now it implements iSpecimen service. Now, here's something that's handy. Do you see when I did that, it actually threw some Javadoc above these methods that I had not Javadoc previously? Fetch by ID and save. Reason for that is we often say that it's it's a good idea to put verbose Javadoc, or I should say concise, appropriate Javadoc on an interface and then just refer to it in the implementing classes. That way if you have numerous implementing classes you don't have to copy and paste the javadoc. In the interest of time I paused the video and filled in the javadoc. It's just a quick and dirty but nonetheless you get the idea. Javadoc above the interface is a good idea and above each method is also a good idea. So I go ahead and choose save and now I'm going to go back to our controller and in a oh, whole look at that it this is a pleasant surprise. I didn't realize it was going to do that for me, but it did. If you take a look, I did not do this. Remember that used to be the type specimen service stub. Notice that when I popped out that interface, it went back to the controller and it changed the variable type from specimen service stub to I specimen service. Cool stuff. Let's redeploy and take a look. Sorry, restarting the debugger. Go ahead and hit this URL again. Notice Eclipse lights up orange and Take a look, where are we? We're in the read method that we were in before. The only difference now is that we've popped out this interface and we've changed the variable type to interface type. So in the read method, let's mouse over and just give a quick once over. Sure enough, the variable specimen service stub does have an object inside of it. Let's verify by choosing F5. And yep, here we are, this looks familiar. F6, 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 once again, we jumped from our controller class to the specimen service stub, which is uh, which was populated with this auto wired component. So we see that the type the, the 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 type of the variable can be an interface. And Spring is smart enough to go kind of look through any qualifying class that implements that interface and has the at component annotation, and it can marry thing, these things up. The business value here is incredible because you see we started with our specimen service stub, we popped out the iSpecimen DAO interface, now we know that Spring is able to make a marriage between these two, which is great because now the UI does not have to wait on the service layer to be complete before the UI can continue programming. It's going to be programming against the stub, but nonetheless. Uh, same thing, the service layer does not have to wait on a complete DAO layer, it can be programmed against the stubs. Now, once the actual implementation is complete, we simply throw in this actual implementation class and we take out this stub class. Now we can leave them in. We can just add one of those at qualifier annotations. There are several ways we can do it to tell Spring, hey, I know there are two qualifying classes. Why don't you use this one instead of that one? A subtle way to do it is just to give a variable 
a name that matches pretty closely to the actual object that you want. But nonetheless, all of the stuff comes together and we can see how with interfaces and with Spring, it's very possible to have parallel development tracks where you have three developers working on the same problem without walking over each other. So this has been a look at the at auto wired annotation in Spring and Spring Boot. There's much more to, to come on this this semester. This is just scratching the surface, but hopefully this gives a better idea on how we can use Spring to wire up these different objects at different layers and have different contributors working together. I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.